this moment of truth preparing is caring our care guides how we prepare we prepare for things that we care about when you plan on going out to see a movie you may prepare by hiding as much candy and snacks in your pockets as space will allow and sometimes more than space will allow if you're going out to eat at a nice restaurant you may prepare by wearing nicer clothes or you may groom yourself a little better and if you're anything like me you probably don't like guests showing up at your doorstep without any advanced warning because you don't like to be surprised or caught off guard by them showing up you want time to straighten up your house you want time to clean a little bit you may want to prepare a little extra food or you might want to buy a dessert and you sure don't want them showing up on a lazy Sunday if you spent the rest of the day in your pajamas after Mass. We prepare for the things that we care about when we expect those things to happen. And when something happens that we don't expect, we really don't like being unprepared for them. Advent is the season of preparation. Technically, we are in a type of Advent all year round. You see, the entire Old Testament was a sort of Advent, as mankind waited in the darkness of sin for the arrival of the Messiah. We're in a similar advent now as we await the return of Jesus Christ, who promised to come again. His coming will be a surprise, but we should be expecting it, because it will definitely happen. He told us that. The advent season is not a season of preparation for Christmas, not really. It's a season that reminds us that we are always waiting for the second coming. It's a season that reminds us, in fact, warns us, not to meet the Lord unprepared. The season of waiting is now, and it doesn't end until the second coming. Advent merely reminds us of that. And it's a special season where we redouble our efforts to prepare ourselves to greet the King of Kings, not in a manger, but when he comes again in glory to judge the living and the dead. But many people don't do much preparation throughout the year. Many of us spend more time preparing for Christmas with gifts and gift shopping and wrapping and decorating and so on. We spend more time preparing for Christmas than we spend preparing our souls to meet Jesus Christ. We forget that we will stand before him at some point, not only at the second coming, but we're going to stand before him when our mortal lives come to an end. This year, let's up our game a little bit. The Lord won't call ahead to let us know that he's on his way, but he's already told us that he is coming, as the scripture at Mass tells us today. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It'll be like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and we're those servants. And he orders the gatekeepers to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. And this last line is the real kicker. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. Isn't that powerful how it ends right there? Jesus is not ambiguous. He has told us that he is coming, but he won't call ahead to tell us he's on his way. So take this season to redouble your efforts. So here's some things you can do, some habits of preparation that you can start. Spend some time in Eucharistic adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. Spend a little extra time in prayer. Spend some quiet time reading the Scripture and meditating on what you find there. Reading it is good, but it's even better to reflect and meditate on what you find there. Go to confession, not once, but two or even three times this Advent. And at least in one of those confessions, make one of those confessions a deep clean. Air out everything that maybe you never confessed before. Confess great sins and small ones. No sin is insignificant. Or, here's a good practice, reconfess old sins that you've already confessed and been absolved for. It's a good practice to make reparations for them. Many saints have said this. And here's a good exercise. You're going to like this one. Choose one or two flaws or vices that you typically struggle with and focus all of your efforts to combat that flaw by doing its opposite virtue. So if anger is your flaw, work harder to be patient and charitable, even when it's hard to do. Whatever your main vice is, your main flaw, 
identify it and work harder to do the opposite of that vice. It may be anger or a lack of charity or lust or impatience. You may be a pathological liar. I don't know. Whatever your main vice or flaw is, spend this Advent season diligently and energetically working against it. God says in Genesis, sin is knocking at your door. It wants to rule you. You must overcome it. Spend this Advent season pushing against one of your flaws, one of your vices, and working to overcome it. Over time, the effort will change you. You'll see. And whatever you do besides, please don't squander this special season of Advent. Let's not be caught off guard when it comes time to face Jesus. Let's aim to live particularly holy lives between now and Christmas, and then make every effort to maintain that pattern of living throughout the year. It's Advent. It's a season of preparation. Preparing is caring. Do you care enough to prepare? Let's do it. This has been a moment of truth by the Catholic Adventurer. Follow me on X at For the Queen BVM, Facebook at Catholic Adventurer, and visit my website, CatholicAdventurer.com.